100 billion dollars. That's what President Biden pledged to Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank at the end of his trip to Israel. At the same time, he promised unprecedented support for Israel's defense. Well, the president again affirmed the mounting evidence that Israel is not responsible for the explosion at a Gaza hospital. Yet the Arab world continues to rage with protests blaming Israel. Chris Mitchell reports. On his way home from Israel, President Biden said Egypt's president agreed to open the Gaza border for humanitarian aid. Before he left Israel, Biden pledged $100 million to Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. Let me be clear, if Hamas diverts or steals the assistance, they will have demonstrated once again that they have no concern for the welfare of the Palestinian people. And it will end. <clears throat> As a practical matter, it will, it will stop the international community from being able to provide this aid. Republican Senator Rick Scott criticized the president's decision. And we've got a president that wants to give money to Gazans? Give me a break. And by the way, go look at the videos. There's pictures of these terrorists with humanitarian first aid kits. We got, there's pictures all over Israeli press about, about these uh, rice bags with bullets in it, all right? So this is a humanitarian effort, right? So there's no way that Hamas doesn't get this money. This is, this is stupid. The president also pledged unprecedented support package for Israel's defense. Following President Biden's visit, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with his war cabinet as the IDF continues to strike Hamas terrorists and its infrastructure in the Gaza Strip. Netanyahu also addressed the plight of the hostages that now stands officially at 203. Regarding the abductees, I clarified three things to President Biden. First, I demand the return of all abductees, and we are working together to return them in any way possible. Second, until they are returned, we demand visits by the Red Cross to our abductees. Third, we will not allow humanitarian aid of food and medicine from our territory to the Gaza Strip. The prime minister also said he presented conclusive evidence that Israel did not strike the hospital in Gaza. The White House National Security Council released its own analysis saying, quote, our current assessment is that Israel is not responsible for the explosion at the hospital in Gaza. On Thursday, the IDF produced more visual evidence that the explosion at the hospital in Gaza was the result of a failed rocket fired by Islamic Jihad. The IDF says all the information coming out of Gaza is controlled by Hamas. Last night, when Hamas announced that Israel attacked hospital in Gaza, too many people around the world not only believed them, but amplified Hamas lies. Open your eyes and see the true face of Hamas. Despite Israel's evidence, news of the hospital strike sparked violent protests at the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, the West Bank, and in other cities. The UK's Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, arrived Thursday to show support for Israel, while Iran's president called for nations to sever ties with the Jewish state. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, joining us now from Tel Aviv is Tal Heinrich. She's a spokesperson for the Prime Minister's office. Welcome to the 700 Club. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, let's get to the hospital explosion, uh, the, uh, what, what appears to me is yet another blood libel. Can, can you tell our viewers exactly who the Gaza Ministry of Health is that was the source of the original rumor? So, Gordon, honestly, I think it's time to put this story to bed in what pertains to Israel. There is an abundance of evidence that we have shown the world, that the Pentagon has seen, that the U.S. president, who was just here yesterday, uh, has spoke of. And uh, it is clear that Israel was not behind this incident. It is unbelievable, as Chris Mitchell said in the report that we just saw, that many media outlets around the world echoed what the Gaza Health Ministry, as you just said, uh, uh, has put out, what Hamas said, what the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, who were behind this uh, uh, missile that fell short in Gaza Strip, said. It's unbelievable that people take the word of a terrorist organization. The Gaza Health Ministry, to your question is in fact the Hamas health ministry. It is based in Gaza. Everything that's happening inside Gaza is under the responsibility of its rulers, the Hamas 
terrorist organization. Uh, there's no independent uh, speaking out, thinking, writing over there. Any word that comes out of Gaza has to be uh, approved by Hamas. If, if anyone steps out of line there, if it's doctors or the health ministry, uh, for example, they will pay the consequences. Well, let's look at what the Arab world is, is currently doing. Uh, and it seems like uh, it's, it's amazing to me how alliances are being forged that I didn't think would happen. Uh, you know, specifically Iran meeting with Saudi Arabia. It looks like the Abraham Accords are now dead. Uh, are, are, are you worried that there's going to be a sort of broader Arab alliance against, against Israel? No, in fact, I am not worried because I hope that peace will prevail once we hit Hamas hard and complete the mission of this operation, of this war that we didn't start, we didn't want, and we didn't expect, but was forced upon us. We were dragged to it by Hamas. Once we dismantle them, uh, Every uh, sane person in the Middle East region will understand that standing by Israel uh, serves their interests. And uh, I wouldn't say that the Abraham Accords are dead. Obviously, it's not coincidental that what happened on October 7th uh, with the massacre that Hamas uh, carried out against our civilians uh, happened as Israel and Saudi Arabia were on the brink of a diplomatic breakthrough. This is not coincidental. Peace and calm in the region uh, are the worst enemies of Iran, of Hezbollah, of Hamas, of Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorists. And I think we shouldn't be amplifying, uh, you know, this these kind of coalition that you alluded to. We should be amplifying the fact that right now, in front of our eyes, there is an international coalition being built to confront Hamas, just like was the case against ISIS. We're seeing overwhelming international support. Can you tell our viewers why Egypt has a closed border with Gaza? Uh, why Egypt really doesn't want to receive any of the Hamas uh, terrorists? That is a question to refer to Egypt. The Rafah border crossing is between Gaza and Egypt. What I can tell you, though, is that uh, we have agreed in discussions with our American counterparts yesterday that humanitarian aid will be able to get it. We will not prevent it, rather, uh, if it goes from Egypt inside the Gaza Strip as long as this humanitarian aid uh, does not end up in, in the hands of Hamas. That, that is all I can say in, in that respect, because it's an issue between Egypt and, and Gaza. Okay. Uh, President Biden announced an enormous aid package going to Israel. Uh, what, what kind of aid are you, are you going to receive? And were there any um, uh, trade-offs for that? Were there any, any expectations in exchange for the aid? We, we are very grateful for any kind of support that we're receiving internationally, uh, first and foremost from uh, President Biden and the U.S. Congress and the moral support that we're seeing uh, from the American people. Uh, the bipartisan support is really incredible, and we are grateful for it. Um, not only the moral support, but also the material support that you're talking about. Um, but, you know, the, the fact that the U.S. president flew in in the middle of, of a war, that's a war zone, zone. that's really unprecedented, and, and it speaks volumes uh, um, of, of what the American people uh, think and know about the truth, about our shared values and, and where we stand together as a civilized world. So we are very thankful to world leaders. But Gordon, I also want to use this platform to say that we are very grateful to uh, individuals, if it's in the U.S., if it's in Europe or, or other places around the world who are uh, supporting our very just cause uh, in this war that we didn't start. And, and many people from around the world are reaching out to us to me uh, personally and are asking, what can we do? How can we help Israel? And this is really heartwarming. Well, can you give us the answer to that? I, I know many of our viewers want to help. Uh, we certainly are standing with Israel in this time. It's, it's absolutely horrific what happened. You look at, at that massacre and, and how did human beings ever do that? Uh, is it time for Hamas to end? Absolutely. We are in complete agreement with you. How can we help you? So donations, the prayers, sharing the truth in media channels, on social media, countering the Hamas propaganda, this means a lot. And also uh, talk on, or let your public representatives know that um, they should stand by Israel and our demands that any entity or any country that is harboring Hamas and its sick ideology should be sanctioned. All right. Well, Tal, thank you. We stand with you. And uh, may God bless you.
Thanks for joining Thank with you, us. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, she wouldn't say it, but I'll say it. Uh, the reason there's a closed border with Egypt is because Hamas is an offshoot. They were literally created by the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. They've been rampant in Egypt for, for years, but they've been declared illegal and their principles have been put in jail. So for them to receive Hamas back into Egypt means they're bringing back the very people they put in jail, the very ideology they're trying to stamp out. Uh, that's the reason for it. And I'll say definitively, when you hear these stories about uh, lack of humanitarian aid, please realize that Hamas stole from UNRWA, stole from the UN medicine uh, that was f supposedly for civilians. They stole it for uh, supplying medical care to terrorists. In the face of that, should we give them anything more? Uh, they don't respect their own civilian population. They're going to steal it. It's time for UNRWA to recognize it. It's time for the U.S. to recognize it. When you're giving money into Gaza, you're literally helping Hamas. Well, the Israeli Defense Forces called up 300,000 reservists after the attack. About 360,000 from around the world have responded to that call. And some of them are deployed in the areas around Gaza. Well, CBN correspondent Chuck Holton is on the ground in southern Israel. He's with us now. What's the mood of the troops that you've talked to? Hi, Gordon. I'd say it's a grim determination that I've seen uh, just talking with some of these troops this morning. And they've basically said, we are trained, we are ready to do this, and we are absolutely committed to wiping out Hamas. Uh, I was just with a group of uh, young cadets from the Israeli version of West Point Military Academy, and they said, we never expected to be leading men into combat this quickly. We're not even finished with our schooling, but they've called us up and we're ready to go. And uh, so actually, there's uh, this place where I am, you can see I'm on a playground. It's, a, it's in a place that is close enough to the border with Gaza that is within range of uh, mortars and artillery. And those are not the kind of things that can be shot down by the Iron Dome system. So while we were talking with some, some of those troops from the Israeli version of West Point, uh, there was a an air raid and we all had to run for the shelter. Uh, and after the, the rounds impacted, then they just sort of sauntered back out and got on with what they were doing. Uh, you can see probably here the video of that. Uh, and we're close enough that when that siren goes off, you've got 10 to 15 seconds to get to shelter before the rounds start impacting. And the system is good enough that it can tell uh, very closely where they're going to land. So it doesn't uh, sound that alarm unless you are really in danger. So they take it seriously. You can see that they run for the shelter. And once the rounds had impacted, they came back out and that was it. Well, I just heard the siren on the B-roll. I hope that's not live right now. I hope that's something that was recorded, because if it's live, please put that helmet on and, and, and drop the mic and get to safety. Uh, I'm hearing reports that there's so many people responding to the call-up uh, that there's just not enough uh, resources uh, to, to help them actually fight the battle. So uh, is that true? And how are people responding to the needs? Well, I would not say that they don't have enough resources to fight, but they were sort of overwhelmed by the response. Uh, they said they got 160% of what they requested from people. And uh, indeed, when I was uh, flying in here, I was on Georgian Airways out of Tbilisi, and the plane was completely full of Russian Jews, young people, that were coming in to join up. Uh, when you go to the airport, it looks like kind of a cross between spring break and preparing for a hurricane or something like that. Uh, there are people meeting their loved ones here, these kids that have been on their gap year and coming back from college. Talked to one guy yesterday from Chicago that was in school, and when he heard about Black Saturday, well, this is what they're calling this on October 7th, uh, he immediately uh, just jumped on an airplane and came over here. Four days later, he had a gun in his hand, and he's up on the northern border getting ready to defend his country up there. So the mood of the troops is, uh, like I say, serious, it's grim, and uh, they obviously 
obviously did not plan on this, but the entire country is pulling together to feed these people, to house them, give them socks and underwear and you name it, whatever they need, the whole country is in this to win. Gordon? Do you have a prediction of, uh, you know, just looking at it on the ground, uh, do, is this going to be something that can be quickly resolved or are we months away uh, from a resolution? Well, I've actually heard some of the officers that I've interviewed say, I hope it's not over quickly because nothing that th is this important is going to be done in a week. We are committed to, to do this as long as it takes. And when we are ready to go in, we will go in and we'll make this happen. All right. That's a great analysis. Thanks, Chuck. And please stay safe and put that helmet on right away. Yes, sir. All right.